Oh yeah. Welcome back everybody, I'm the Brig and Bob, and today we are going to talk about how I fix the short stroking issue and feeding issue on my 300 Blackout when firing subsonic ammunition. Uh, if you saw my last video, I was test firing my 300 Blackout for the first time suppressed, and I fired it with both supersonic ammunition and subsonic ammunition, and with subsonic ammunition, it had trouble cycling. Now, supersonic ammunition cycled just fine, both suppressed and unsuppressed. Subsonic ammunition is only meant to be fired suppressed. There's no good reason to fire subsonic ammunition unsuppressed. There's just no good reason to do it. So my focus was on fixing short stroke issues, firing subsonic ammunition out of my 300 blackout while suppressed. Now, I didn't think it was a gassing issue because it was firing supersonic ammunition unsuppressed perfectly fine without any problem at all. Cycled fine, no malfunctions, no feeding issues, and I got last bolt hold open. Unsuppressed, the subsonic, or suppressed, the subsonic ammunition was having feeding issues, uh, and it was consistently not locking back on the last shot fired, so I wasn't getting last shot uh, bolt hold open with subsonic ammunition when I was shooting suppressed. And so I figured, Probably not the gassing system, but I bet that I could more than likely address this particular issue through the buffer. So I weighed the buffer that I had in that particular rifle, or pistol build rather, and what I found was that that buffer was 4.6 ounces, uh, which is an ounce and a half more than just your standard carbine buffer. So it was an H2 buffer. Uh, H2 buffers weigh about four and a half ounces. So what I did is I took the roll pin out of the uh, the buffer and I dropped one of the weights out and that removed an ounce and a half and that brought the buffer weight down to exactly three ounces and what I did for the empty space in between so I didn't have clacking noise is I inserted just some earbud gels from old earbuds that are dead and gone so I've got a bunch of these earbud gels laying around if you jam them down in there they take up that space and they make sure that you don't get that clacking noise in your buffer, which is, in my opinion, super annoying. So this is a different buffer. Um, this is actually a standard carbine weight. It weighs exactly three ounces, but I figured I would show you guys how you can change the weight in your buffer. This is just a standard steel weight. It is one and a half ounces. If you want to get your buffer over an H2 and you want it to weigh more than four and a half ounces, you can use tungsten weights, which weigh uh, more and have greater density than the standard weights do. And that can add even more weight to your buffer if you are trying to mitigate recoil issues, um, combat dwell time, things of that nature, you can do that. Somebody at the range asked me, oh, well, do you have an adjustable buffer? Well, truth be told, all buffers are adjustable. They all have this little roll pin in here. You can just knock it out, pull out this rubber buffer part. Maybe it's a plastic. You can pull that out, and then you can just change the weights around to get the desired weight for your buffer that you want. I wouldn't really recommend going lighter than three ounces, um, but in a lot of cases, you may want to go heavier. In this particular case, I solved my issues with 300 blackout having feeding issues and cycling issues with subsonic ammunition suppressed by simply dropping the buffer weight down to three ounces. And it cycled like a dream after that. Uh, and it's so soft shooting that it literally feels uh, like shooting airsoft when I'm shooting 300 blackout subsonic ammunition suppressed. It is shocking how little recoil I get from that weapon when firing it and how quiet it is. It's actually probably quieter than an airsoft gun at that point. But I digress. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab a punch. We're going to knock out this roll pin. We're going to take this out. And in this particular case, instead of dropping weight, I'm going to add the weight that I took out of my other buffer to make this an H2 buffer at four and a half ounces. So let's go ahead and get started. If you don't have a roll pin punch set, you should. You should also have a ball ping hammer. They are super useful. Uh, now this comes, this little kit comes with a little hammer like this, but I don't care to use it unless I want to use the rubber side for something I'm trying to like prevent marring something up or damaging something. 
uh, just doesn't have the same uh, weight that the ball ping hammer does. And this thing, uh, yeah, I really like it. It's an eight ounce ball ping hammer, has worked great for me. And I uh, use it a lot in my work here on the bench. So we're gonna go ahead and find the right size punch first before we do anything. And it looks like 330 seconds uh, is going to be the right size to go ahead and drive this, this bad boy out. Now in this case, I'm actually using uh, a real Avid Smart Bench block that is actually made for um, armorers work with pistols. But the buffer tube just lays nicely right over it. And I can position the roll pin right over this hole and the roll pin will just fall right down and get captured inside of the block making it super easy to retain so i don't lose the roll pin and i can hammer it back in once i'm done adjusting the weight for this buffer so again all buffers are adjustable it's not you know you can buy quote unquote adjustable buffers uh, off of different vendors websites and they're touted as adjustable buffers but the truth is, is all buffers truly are adjustable if you can you know, take the time and effort to do it. If you have a punch that fits, you can knock out that roll pin. Okay, that roll pin is out. It was captured right here by the block. I'm gonna put the block back in place. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the plastic buffer out Boop. there we go that's it that's all there is to it and you can see there's all this space in here and that's why there was that clacking around if you wanted to you could just jam a few of these so say you don't even want to increase the weight say you just have a buffer uh, that came from the manufacturer and it's three ounces and whenever you slosh it around you get that super annoying clacking sound which i just drives me absolutely nuts I have found that just taking a couple of these guys and jamming them down in there. If they go sideways, it's kind of a pain in the neck. You want to try to get it down in there right side up. Well, or I could just drop it on my garage floor, which is also a super common thing to do when you're in the garage working on stuff. So you can just use this as a guide here. All right, so I've got two of those little guys in there. Two usually does the trick and you shove it down in there and you can get a little bit of resistance from them. And if you notice, no more wiggle room. So you don't get that sloshiness, that sloppiness that you do before. So if you just want to take the slop out of your buffer, that's one way to do it. In this particular case, I'm not taking the slop out. I am just simply going to add weight to it because I know what kind of rifle this is going to go into. And I want it to be an H2 buffer. I do not want it to be a... Uh, Okay. These are super light. I don't know what material this is made out of, but it's incredibly light. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not a fan. I don't know if this is going to have the room. Nope. Let's 
so. What we're gonna do instead. So there were three three weights in here. Uh, they are made of a very light material. I'm not sure what that material is, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use these tungsten weights instead. I feel almost like the same weight. So this might actually be a tungsten weight. I'm not entirely sure. There we go. So it's like it turns out that we're likely to go ahead and use the uh, those earbud gels anyway, because there will be three weights in here. And it's going to have that sloshiness to it. So we're going to go ahead and add this earbud gel here. And boom. All right, I've got no sloppiness in here. It's a nice, good weight. I like the weight of that. I like how it feels. Now we're going to go ahead and take our roll pin and hammer it back in. Now I don't have to position it over the hole on the uh, block because now I'm hammering it back in. I'm not hammering it through, so I don't have to worry about it catching it. I'm just going to gently tap it at first to get it started. And then Then I'll take a, I'll take my punch just to drive it in the last little bit. There we go. It's all the way back in. And as you can see, all the sloppiness has been removed. Oh, Black Widow. All the sloppiness has been removed from this buffer now. So now, we're going to go ahead and go weigh it. It was three ounces before. We're going to go see how much this weighs now. All right, we're in my kitchen now. This is the scale that I use to measure out uh, portions for cooking and for meal preps and stuff of that nature. But in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and use it to measure the weight of the buffer. It was exactly three ounces before. So now we're going to weigh it and see how much it weighs feels significantly heavier. Yeah, now it's 5.6 ounces. That is significantly heavier. So what I could do if I wanted to reduce the weight of this buffer is I could take out one of the heavier weights and replace it with one of the weights made of the lighter material. I'm going to go ahead and leave this for right now, just uh, test it out in the new build that I'm going to do here in a bit. So this might be the perfect weight for that particular build. Might be too heavy too, might cause short stroking issues, might have to change out the weight, but we'll see. Anyway, this has been just a quick rundown of how you can go ahead and swap out parts on your buffer to make a heavier or lighter buffer and to take out some of that slop in your buffer with the weight sloshing around. I hope this has been useful to you. If you got any kind of benefit out of this content, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, leave your questions, comments in the section below. Uh, if you want to tell me how much I suck at this, you can do that too. As always, be kind, be compassionate, be empathetic, but still remember to be dangerous and have a great day.